Encouraging 4-3 aspect ratios. Encouraging 4-1 hip waist ratios. I've never had a squishy brain stuck to my shoe, but I suspect that this woman should have struggled quite a bit more with running across the floor. Suddenly I have to consider that some people have uvulas that could hang down low enough to be swallowed. Why is this creature's brain outside of its head? That wasn't a feature of either Frankenstein's monster or zombies. So why would it be a feature of some weird Franken-zombie hybrid? Wait. Is Frankenstein's monster a type of zombie? Is anything that comes back from the dead technically a zombie? For the love of zombie Jesus, we need some rulings on this sh**. Movie omits the moment she removes her brain shoe in between shots, and I was really looking forward to that part. What's happening now? Now Norman will explain that the zombie is eating the woman, rather than point out the boom mic in the low-budget horror film. This is disappointing because the first step in sitting a movie is to notice the obvious things, and I'm afraid Norman might not have what it takes to write for us in the future. The zombie is eating her head, Grandma. That's not very nice. What's he doing that for? Because <laughs> he's a zombie? That's what they do. That's racist. Decorative fireplaces. What you watching in there? <clears throat> Sex and violence. Forcing me to rewind and watch this intro five times before giving up and realizing this statement is only half true. Can't you be like other kids your age and pitch a tent in the yard? Knowing where the other neighborhood kids pitch their tents. She said it's not very ladylike to hide photos of the high school quarterback with his shirt off in your underwear drawer. Letting the high school quarterback store his shirt in your underwear drawer. Oh, you've been sneaking around in my personal floor! No, I haven't. Grandma <gasps> told me. That is not better. I know we're supposed to like Ghost Mom, but starting us off with the information that she peeps on her granddaughter's private quarterbacking sessions and then deems her f***ing unladylike for her own desire is not getting us off on the right ghost foot. Sensitive is writing poetry and being lousy at team sports. Not this. Not what? Seeing the dead? Norman's father just went straight from seeing ghosts to unbridled homophobic gay panic so fast that I'm having trouble keeping up. Look, there are rules for serial killer boarding, and one of those rules is that you don't dedicate one to your nephew. This is a recipe for misunderstanding when a scrapbook can work just as well. Leaving your exfoliating brush this close to the nasty bathroom floor behind the tub. Did this soldier stop to put a sling on his arm and then get back on a horse that had two swords on its neck? And why would you go back into battle while riding a horse with one good arm anyway? I need a full movie on what led to him dying in this condition ASAP. Also, did this guy drowning also kill all these ghost fish? And why is he still in a concrete block? I feel like the spirit world in this movie may be more concerned with making a joke or correctly identifying a stereotype than it is with accurately spiriting. Suck it in, sweetie. No, no, your gut. There you go. Reshaping people for a preferred picture that misrepresents a perfectly fine reality. Bringing up via text while also not having the guts to break up via text. Entire school lingers outside the building until the bell rings so we can sense how ostracized the protagonist is by their peers' cliche. Drama zippers are the worst. Just when you think your items are zipped in safely, they fling themselves open for maximum empathetic impact. Do not buy backpacks with these zippers. Such a scam. Hey, ghost jerk, you know what? Yeah, I know what. I know it isn't a textbook kid movie until the bullies show up. Flies don't talk. And that is the only explanation we will ever have on the hierarchy of souls that linger. Puritans were strict and devout settlers who came here to build a home, a place without sin. No such place exists. Listen, the sound of a self-fulfilling prophecy approaches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby. Sorry. Oh, you useless bunch of kids. Social study. The witch's curse is real. Choosing to deliver conspiratorial theories in a way that makes you look like even more of a conspiracy theorist so that there is no doubt. If only the real world worked this way, we may have made it to the moon by now. Don't make me throw this hummus. Threatening someone with hummus. We can put up with a little violence in our kids' movie, but there is a line. Can you see ghosts, like, everywhere all the time? Uh... Yeah. Norman will then spend the rest of the movie seeing only plot-specific ghosts despite entering a graveyard. The level of concern I have over the fact that this character has a flat skull is immense. Can we please just put a hat on this guy so I'm not constantly wondering if he was in a tragic hay baling accident? Phew. Much better. Thanks. This dog was said to have been ran over by an animal rescue van. But clearly was bifurcated by a surgical saw. <laughs> there is a more interesting story here that we will never know. It appears as though this lawn is mowed by going over the paving stones, and my lawnmower has asked me to sin this on behalf of its delicate blades. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Premature fibrillation. Must be the season of the wind. Great. No one. Scene does not contain a Donovan or even a Nicolas Cage. I curse you accusers to die a horrible and gruesome death. Hold on. So she curses them, they die, and then get back up? Kill the witch! Kill the witch! And then kill her as undead people? That makes no sense. Oh no. 
Not again. Seeing the dead? Fine, but when one of your powers just happens to be seeing important expositional flashbacks, I'm calling witch nanigans. <laughs> And that's all the energy the mother can give her child at this moment because she and everyone else just watch this kid fall and offer no physical support, not even a quick checkup for bruises. Neil is a dick to his deltoids and keeps his arms out even though the play is clearly over. Running power from here across the entire front of the stage when there appears to be another outlet here. You know, sometimes people say things that seem mean, but they do it because they're afraid. There is such good insight here on the reasons people fall into hatred and discrimination, but I'm still sinning that you threw the word seem in there. People do things that are mean, and sometimes even evil, and you can try and find empathy in the reasons without downplaying the abhorrent behavior, Sandra. Or maybe I'm expecting too much out of my stop motion mother figures. Growing up on an open toilet seat, is it not open? Do school toilets have lids that close? Jesus, what a fancy thing to offer to the kids who will just pee on it. Riding the haunted toilet seat instead of just immediately getting the f out of there. Can you use another stall? Or even come through the front door or ceiling or floor. I'm not 100% sure the rules to where ghosts could appear, but I'm guessing there are other choices than butthole central. My ghost isn't going anywhere until I pass on my duty. This is not the place to be talking about passing on duties. Wait, oh well, yeah, it is. It means the past is coming back to haunt you! I see that the movie is opting to make Mr. Prendergast just as useless as he was in the previous scene where he said a lot of nothing. Those nine words could have easily been, it means read to the witch at her hidden grave, but no! Uncle Derp wants to both save the world and make it as dramatic as possible all at the same time. Listening at a door that isn't connected to the floor or the ceiling, making it very easy to have eavesdropped without touching your face to a poopified surface. <laughs> So every ghost that fulfills their one last thing turns into a bomb that can blast anyone across a room? How has this phenomenon never been recognized before? Uh, yeah. You, uh, you might want to give that a few minutes. Sir, you are seated on top of the closed toilet lid with your pants all the way up. That flush ain't fooling anyone. He's probably up there right now, fiddling with his Ouija or his orbs. Being overly concerned about your child fiddling with their Ouija orbs. Having a Friday the 13th ringtone when your entire room is only zombie shit. Wait, Jason was dead too, wasn't he? Does that mean Jason is also a zombie? Mr. Prendergast appeared to me in the bathroom. Ew. No, his spirit. Still, ew. Bet there's no cable or canasta up there either. Wanting access to canasta in the afterlife. Or cable for that matter. Honestly, I think the afterlife would be more about ad-free streaming in spades. Wait, is canasta and cable the afterlife version of Netflix and chill? I promised I'd always look out for you. And to be clear, Kerrig includes telling Norman to talk to his verbally toxic father about turning up the heat, even though she knows that it will infuriate him and initiate a cycle of abuse. How the f*** is that caring for this tormented child? There's nothing wrong with being scared, Norman, so long as you don't let it change who you are. Telling a child not to change, as if the evolution of self beyond and through trauma is a bad thing. So I said to her, girl, come back and talk to me when your basket toss gets 12,000 hits on YouTube. Calling views hits. I thought maybe Norman wasn't really an asshole, but then he drives through Alvin's dance space and doesn't even flip around to say he's sorry. Also, Norman driving past here somehow magically stops the music track from playing. And considering the artist, I find it interesting that by creating one dizzy rascal, it stops the other. This very fecal looking slug exiting one of this mannequin's unnecessary orifices. I don't entirely understand rigor mortis, but I have seen a lot of CSI. So I can confidently sin that this dead guy has overly rigid fingers and entirely too loose arm joints, and it's some bullshit. This entirely too long, disgusting bullshit of a human tongue! Thinking that a town whose entire identity and economy is built on this story wouldn't have turned this gravesite into a tourist attraction by now. Read from the book. Stop the curse. Listing the things you need to do to save the world instead of just doing the things you need to do to save the world. These spooky hands decide to overly dramatize this rambling route to the underworld instead of just mainlining it to zombie time. These two don't even try to plant any sun shrooms now so they can get the snow peas, repeaters, and walnuts down later. What are you gonna do when the bucket heads arrive, Norman? What then? Are you freeze framing mom's aerobics DVD again? No! <laughs> They tried everything that could be done. Pilgrimages, prayers, and... Well, if that last word isn't f***ing, then they really didn't try everything. <laughs> There's no way to remove a child's zipped up jacket that quickly by grabbing it by the hood like that. To be clear, I have done zero field research into this clearly true fact. Still having moisture in your mouth despite being dead 300 years. Look out! Running towards a speeding vehicle in the center of the road. 
Okay. No. no. Everyone is okay. Um, guys, maybe we should actually drive away now. And also probably call the police, right? We have cell phones. How are they not thinking about calling for help? When I'm nervous, I get mouth diarrhea. Putting those two words directly next to each other. Please select from the following options. Press like to send that this policewoman is still standing even though she brought a Vespa to a van fight. Press subscribe to send that this policewoman somehow hasn't noticed the flailing zombie that has gone from the roof to the windshield of the vehicle she has been chasing. Press the notification bell to send that Norman would be able to maintain a phone conversation with the violent turns and noise all around him. Thank you. A customer service agent will be with you never. Even in stop motion animation, someone apparently somehow forgot that cell phones turn off the screen when you hold them up to your face. I have no idea what you're talking about. Seriously. This asshat casually driving over broken boards in the street like he doesn't give a f about a flat tire. Hold on, let's slow down this series of crashes for a geography check. The van is coming toward Norman's asshole parents, and then spins them out, so they are now facing toward the direction the van is moving. Then after Norman's asshole dad asks, Where are the police when you need them? She hits their vehicle with ironic timing, coming from the exact opposite direction that the van was traveling. How did the police Vespa end up driving toward the discount mystery machine? Also, putting a miniature trampoline in the front yard. You put that shit inside the house where no one can see your shame. Ed, re, one, sir, fives, this, 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 uh, and this. Perfect. Now the geeks are in charge. The 21st century. This joke about the guy waiting for his chips to get to the front before the zombies get him is kind of funny. The problem is that this is not how these machines work. The snacks are all loaded to the front, so they drop on a single turn. And if they aren't, you're going to have to keep putting money in for every turn it takes to get it out to you. Movie doesn't know how to vending machine correctly. But why use the six, ace, and the three as the magic lucky cards? Hmm? Because if I had this as a starter hand during a poker game where the rivers flop the implied odds of the turn equity, I would fold. This is not how you play roulette, unfortunately. Covering up the first W in witchy wiener. Whatever the f*** this document is with strained dates and numbers and signatures and sections for married to oneself and married to other with a casual married to an object thrown in there. Tell us the object! There is room for that information and I need to know. The sheer amount of face wash needed to separate the clump of eyelashes at the end of the day. If I'd known there was so much reading involved, I would have brought a completely different group of people who hate me. Making fun of people who don't enjoy reading. Also, reading. You need to stop all this weird stuff and start living in the real world. I mean, Norman is in the real world where there are dead people walking around. I understand this character is shallow and blames Norman for everything, but this stop being you bit should have ended when Alvin saw the seven child murderers rise from the dead and could back up Norman's story. We're past it. They're in here, all right. I can feel its clammy yeah. flesh. Using misinformation to incite a mob to break into a government building. This kid was far too willing to light her stuffy aflame and chuck it at dead people in the town hall. How is she so prepared to make such major life choices? We will now go directly into some more convenient flashback spovisions because the only way the movie knows how to give us important information is just to spoon feed us to us. No! No! That's right, this movie is about the execution of a child for witchcraft. This is so f***ing dark. What is this, a Pixar movie? Also, just so we're clear, she actually does turn out to have witchcraft power, so I'm not even sure what the movie is saying at this point. Presumably, Norman has fallen from the roof through glass onto marble floors in a building that was meant to be on fire, and not only did he survive this, but once again, his parents have watched him fall from a height and really can't be bothered to fight their way to him to check on him. F*** those two. We need you to read from the book. And we're finally talking to you instead of slowly stalking you like monsters because it's time to give the audience another story twist so they quit checking their phone notifications. I was wrong. Were you though? I mean, clearly you were because even though she's proven to be vindictive and violent and full of immense power, she was also just a kid. So you were definitely wrong. But were you though? Before me, it was Mr. Prendergast. And before him, there were others. But let's go back to the first anniversary of her death 299 years ago and consider that someone who shared the Talk to the Dead gift would have had to have braved the witch crazed community and read at the grave of the murdered Agatha so that the accusers weren't inconvenienced and brought back by a curse. I don't buy it. Those ghost whisperers back then would have let the accusers return to eat the Puritans so they could live in ghost whisperer peace and quiet away from murderous assholes. This may be the last chance I get to tell you how I feel. And this may be my last chance to skip. 
I'm not sure why this dramatic exit is needed when the kids are the ones who barricaded themselves inside and could have just, you know, removed the barricade. I know that this seems crazy. That you think we can buy into this moving moment of solidarity between you all when the movie hasn't given us a single indication that any of you have an authentic bone in your misproportioned bodies? Yeah, crazy for sure. I have cheered the uncheerable Norman. Detroit Lions fans. I see your itchy wieners joke movie and I was already there 20 minutes ago. Not sure if that's a sin for me or for you, but I'm adding one for one of us. Do you think that's it? Do you f***ing think? The whole time we were in a goddamn archive while there was a neon tornado pointing the way the f*** is wrong with everyone? Okay, also this intersection is dangerous. The sign says to go 20, you know, slowly, but the cross street doesn't have a stop sign. The city should really look into that. Why is that person you exactly? Look, I don't blame you for zoning out during parts of the movie, but honestly, you know he's the only one who can see the dead. So I find this question asinine. Asinine, I say. It's been a long night and we're like only 11 years old. And I don't want to go to sleep and you can't make why was Norman even going down that road? He already realized that putting her to sleep wasn't the way to go and came here to talk to her. So what's up with this tired third act misunderstanding? I don't like this story. Well, too bad. We've come this far despite my instinctual disgust in all things I watch. I need to know how this unique, bold story ends. So shut your shiny face and let Norman save the day by letting everyone die for being such an asshole. That is what happens, right? The more she turned away from people, the more scared they were of her. He's... Was Norman trying to somehow make Agatha's death her fault? The longer it stayed, the less there was of the little girl. Holy f that is some high octane nightmare fuel. Like, this is some 91, 94 grade shit. I want to drive electric. I want to drive electric! <laughs> This is another vision, right? The world isn't actually falling apart here. So I'm annoyed Norman isn't flying and using his imagination to do cool shit in this scene. Sure, he's fighting a hyper mad super ghost, but get creative. Don't just boring jump. I don't think Aggie is supposed to look like she's crying blood, but Aggie looks like she's crying blood. I think you got so scared that you forgot who you are. Thinking a kid knows who she is before having a chance to grow up and find herself, which of course is followed by the horrifying reality that you will never figure any of this out before you die. But there's always someone out there for you. Unless you're murdered by adults first, then there's really no one. Why can everyone else see the ghosts now? I understand when they were actual Z words, but how are the non-Norman normies spotting the spirit world now? Mom, you're embarrassing me. That's my job. It is not. So. What's, What's happening, happening now? now? Counseling! All you f***ers need to be in family therapy immediately! I'm not sleepy. I'm hungry. How many times do we have to go through this, son? Your grandmother is dead! I know. Then why do you keep on talking to her? I see dead people. How you doing? How you doing? This soul's doomed to an eternity of damnation! You have a chance to achieve greatness tonight. You have a wonderful script, a brilliant ensemble of players, and if all else fails, you have Bobby McFerrin. What do you think you're doing? What book? The one in my hands. They look like big, good, strong hands. <clears throat> but it's only a story. It's not real. It's only a story. When I was 16, I thought by 23, I'd be married, maybe have a kid, corner <laughs> office by day, entertaining at night. I was supposed to be driving a Grand Cherokee by now. <laughs> yeah! I have a hole in my stomach! Remember 